and then again really roughly paint the edges don't worry about going over the lines because we're going to tidy that up really easy way in a minute Good. Filter blur Gaussian blur and blur this quite heavily. Be twenty. I think that's gonna be about right. Now as you can see what that blur's done is it's pushed our line into the transparent area where we don't want it. The really easy way of getting rid of that is if you go back to your background copy layer that our um, refine edge tool created, don't actually click in the layer, hold control and click in the layer thumbnail and then that will select the object or the subject or the model or whatever. And then if you select a selection tool like magic wand or any of the selection tools right click select inverse and make sure your shadow layer is selected control x and i think that line those lines can stand to be brought down in opacity a bit so i don't know 80 maybe 80 usually is a good number for this kind of thing zoom out see what the finished I think we need to go in with an eraser at this top bit making the brush soft and relatively big and just erase a bit there I think that's good happy with that mm, actually I undid couple of eraser lines. I'm quite happy with that. So the next bit of shading we're going to look at is the hand. Now I don't know about you but I hate second life hands <laughs> and I mean they're ugly and there's not a huge amount you can do to make them not ugly unless you're a talented digital artist which I'm not so I'm going to show you an easy way create a new layer go back to your brush tool and you want a relatively hard line but we're going to go really small maybe about 5-6 pixels that's fine and again same procedure really that we've done for all our shading we're going to draw a line around the outline of the hand and the fingers and you can if it's a good quality skin it's going to help you a lot because it will enable you to follow the lines that the skin creator has already given us if it's a good skin which a lot of the time it's not then we're going to press X which will reverse the colour option which will mean that we'll have a white colour now and then using your imagination as well you can Imagine where the light of the fingers would lie and paint that in and bring the line further than you want it because we're going to go in with an eraser to soften it. And you can make your brush smaller by either actually going up and doing it or the shortcut is this squ left square bracket to make it smaller and the right one to make it bigger. It's a handy little hint. And as I say, just follow the natural line 
of where the highlight would lie. And as the fingers get smaller, it gets more pinkety. But I think that's going to be okay. And we go back to our old faithful, which is blur and gaussian blur. Take the radius down about about three, I guess. We're gonna take the opacity down, I'm sure. Then we're going to go to the layer style selection here, or the the le the blending mode rather than the layer style story. And then we're going to select overlay. Now, right now, that looks really harsh. So we're going to take the opacity down to around seventy. That's fine. And with a nice big eraser again, just smooth it out. So that still looks a bit orangey to me, so what we can do is rather than overlay we can go for soft light and bring the opacity back up again. That looks good to me, it gives a more definition to the hand and the fingers. On someone with darker skin than I have, usually I use overlay. So really, that is, that is it for shading, apart from the chin. So we can approach the chin next. Now with the chin shadow, I have to be honest and say that I usually cheat. I usually use um, a chin shadow that I got on another tutorial. Um, but I'll, for, for the sort of sake of this tutorial, I'll show you how I would usually actually go about making one myself. So create a new layer and we're going to use a different tool for this, not the brush, which is the polygonal, I'm really useless at pronouncing these words, this one, <laughs> the middle one. Select that and then what we're going to do is starting where the hair meets the chin on one side, we're going to start with this side I think, click once and then really it's about sort of experimenting and experience telling you what kind of angle you want. I'm going to go for, I think I'm going to go for that and then bring it across all the way to the edge of the arm. And then again, you don't have to be. Oh, don't mean to do that. Start again. Promise you warts and all. <laughs> Can do that, which will give us a bit more of a. And then around the edges. Oh, I don't know why it keeps doing this. I'm sorry. Follow the edges of the arm to get the hair. Just doing as neat a job as you can of following the hair again up to where it meets the hair, meets the cheek or the chin, and then very slightly within the chin and the jaw little clicks to do this. If you're not sure how any of these basic tools work then contact me in world and I'll point you in the right direction of some tutorials that will be able to explain it much better than I will. So when you have your general shape we're going to go to the fill the paint bucket fill thing I'm getting really technical now. 
thing and left click to fill that selection with black. Then we're going to go back to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and you don't want to blur this too much, maybe 2.5 or maybe 3 was fine. Around that I think. Okay, now we're going to take that opacity way down to around there, I think around 20, 22ish. I don't want it any more than that really. Then taking a nice big eraser, we're now going to sh basically shape the shadow that we want underneath the chin. And the way we do that is firstly getting rid of any of the lines that we created. when first making it and you really need to sort of continually zoom in and zoom out for this I'm going to up my opacity a bit more and get rid of I don't want it on the shoulder I don't think I'm going to up the harness a bit. And you can make it as softer or as hard as you want. I think that looks pretty perfect. Just makes that jawline more defined I think and that is really it for, for shading the next step is going to be about um, integrating our avatar or our model into the background that we choose I've already chosen a background so in the next part we'll be looking at that and, and how to make your avatar part of the scene so I'll see you in the next part